Hey, math scholars! I almost forgot to uh, start my video. A student reminded me, but we are doing one six today. It's Thursday. Who's excited? I'm excited. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> Math scholars, we got a freshman football game tonight. Everybody's wearing their jerseys, looking sharp, looking scholarly. Uh, real quickly, we did talk about precise measurements. For you to have a precise measurement, you want to have the smallest unit you can, whether that is seconds or minutes, you choose seconds. If it's meters or centimeters, you use two centimeters. So you can pause the video and look at the answers we put up here, but you basically always choose the smaller unit of measure. Now we're talking about the hardest concept of the day. It's the concept of significant digits. Um, I'll make all these disappear at once. But basically, digits are significant if they are non-zero integers, like four and five, or if they are zeros wedged between two non-zero numbers, like these zeros right in here, they were wedged between the fours, and then zeros to the right of non-zero numbers. So these zeros at the end were significant. So I kind of made the statement that this particular number had seven significant digits. The significant ones are the ones with the arrows pointing to them, okay? Basically, the only ones that didn't count were the zeros at the beginning. And every number is a little different, so we're going to look at a whole bunch of example problems, okay? Are we still writing? Do we need pause or are we ready to go? Right. Still, some, some are still. All right, we've got three more numbers here just to kind of look at. They're all a little bit different with where the zeros are placed. Um, so our first example problem is 281.39. That's the easiest scenario they could ever throw at you. Since there's no zeros, every single number is significant. So I've got one, two, three, four, five significant digits, okay? The next one starts getting harder. Point, zero, zero, seven, zero. We're not gonna count the zeros out front, so I'm not gonna count these three zeros. The seven, I will count as a significant digit because it is a number that's not zero. And then the zero to the right gets counted, so that has two, okay? And then finally in 500.7, Every digit counts because these two zeros are wedged between the five and seven. If you have somebody wedged between, you count them. So one, two, three, four, there's four significant digits. Our first one on our own. Let's see how we do. 290.01. Are we going to count the two? Yeah, no. Yes, because it's a two. Yeah, definitely. We're going to count the nine? Yeah. Yes, it's the zeros that you need to question. Are we going to count these two zeros? Yeah. We are, and here's why. It's because they're wedged between the 9 and 1. So everybody counts on this one. So how many significant digits are there? Five, okay? Five significant digits in that one. Any questions? I know this is weird. Part B. Getting harder. So zero out front. Are we going to count that one? No. No, because it's just out front. It has no purpose. Are we going to count the 8? Yes. Are we going to count the five? No. Yes. yes. How about these trailing zeros? No. You actually do. Yes. You count trailing zeros no. that are to the right of digits that are not zero. So this would have four. Yep. No. Okay. On part C, this is the first one we've seen like this. 4,000. All right. So the four definitely gets counted. But you want to know something? Those zeros actually don't because they're just um, zeros that are there to hold the place of the 4,000, but they're not actually helping the number be any accurate. So it's just going to be a 1. That's probably the weirdest one we've seen so far. Yeah. I just checked in the textbook to make sure I was remembering right. The answer is 1. Question? Try this one by yourself. Count the significant digits, get that number in your head, and then you can we'll all get a volunteer to raise their hand and tell me what they think the answer is. All right. Uh, close. I would count the five. I would count the four. These two are wedged between, so change your answer. Five. Very good. Okay. Go ahead and try this one. What did you guys put for this one, Brooke? 
Very good. So Brooke did not count these zeros out front. She only counted those two guys right there, the three and two. Okay, try this one. Who thinks we've got an answer? Caspian. Three. Good. So she's going to count the three, the two, and the zero. So that's three total. Yeah. Ooh, good one. 540,000. Give that one a try. All right, so on this one, the five is going to count, the four is going to count, but these zeros are not going to count because they are not after the decimal. So two. All right, it looks like there's two more on this slide. Why don't you go ahead and just try both of them? Hello, people on the video. We're going to go with two on this one, but I asterisk it because I'm going to check on that. I really don't think the zero will count to the right of the decimal point, but I'm going to check for sure. We haven't seen one like that. I think it would have to have a non-zero digit um, to the right of the decimal for it to have to count. I like this one. This has the non-zero, and then these are wedged between. So what did you go with for this one? Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I'd go with nine, too. Because the zeros are wedged between non-zero digits. You always count them in that case. <clears throat> All right. So here's where we're going to actually use this with our calculations. If we're adding and subtracting, we're going to round our answer to the same decimal place as the least accurate number, the number with the least significant digits. And same with multiplying and dividing, we'll round our final answer to the same number of significant digits as the least accurate number. So if the least accurate number only has one significant digit, you'll round your answer to one significant digit. But if it has like nine, then you go with nine, whatever the least accurate is. Which is surprising, you'd almost think you'd want it to be the most accurate. All right, so before we head to our calculators and actually try these adding and multiplying problems, we're going to have to figure out which is the least accurate number. So how many significant figures are you seeing here? Three. Three. How many are you seeing here? Four. So the least accurate is this one. Four. And we're going to want to round our answer to three significant digits. So let's grab the calculator and actually do that addition problem. Yeah, you got 51.65. However, 51.65 has four significant digits. We need to round to three significant digits. So 51.7 would be the final answer you'd want. Oh, we rounded this six up to a seven because to the right of it was a five. You know rounding. Okay, let's do the next one. How many significant digits in this one? Three. How many in here? Three. So we want to round our answer to two significant digits. So 6.5 times 8.34 is 54.21. But we want two significant digits. What should we round it to? 54. Very good. And finally, how many significant figures right here? Four. How many right here? Three. three. So our final answer, we're going to want three. <clears throat> Maybe just jot down three in parentheses to remind yourself of that. We want our final answer to have three. 27.23 minus 14.2 is 13.03. Hmm. Sam purchased 0 .2, 0 0.25 pounds of provolone cheese, 2 pounds of Swiss cheese, and 1.5 pounds of American cheese from the deli. Which measure would have the most significant digits? Oh, I know which one. Uh, Kenneth, what do you think? The 1.50, yeah. So that's three significant digits, so the American cheese. That's it. I thought they were going to have us actually calculate something. That's it. All right. Which student in this chart made the most precise measurement when asked to measure their desk? Yeah, I'd go with Elisa. 
she not only has three significant digits, but she used inches when Caleb used feet. So I would definitely go with Elisa. You're looking at the digits being the smallest. Oh, well, we're not going to do the game. We don't have time for the game, so let's just do a couple of these problems. How many significant digits do you think there are? Raise your hand if you know. Let's go with Caspian. I was going to go with one, just this one. What do you guys think? Two. We're, we're sticking with our answer one after even seeing the rules. All right, what do we think for this one? I heard somebody whisper four. I don't think it's four. I think it's three. One, two, three. I'd say four, too. Whoever said that. Was that Dylan? Four. Yeah, four. These zeros are not going to count. Now, if there had been like a three here, that suddenly makes those zeros count. Okay, but, but we didn't have that there, so it's just going to be four. What? Because, yeah, if there was a number here, then these two would count. But these weren't wedged between two non-zeros. All right, what do you guys think about this one? There's those wedged zeros I was just talking about. Yes, everybody's going to count. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I've just kind of been watching the clock. I think it's good enough to call it a day here. It is 9.17. So, um, oh, here's your homework. Again, I have it captured in Polaris. It's still your best bet for textbook uh, homeworks. Looking for it in captured in Polaris, okay? Thanks for watching the video if you're at home today.